Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. And in this video, I'm just upgrading and taking you guys along with me. Uh, I'm not gonna do a time lapse or anything about it, but the primary components that I'm just, you know, replacing the motherboard and CP, which is pretty much the brains of this outfit, is the X570 Tachi Razor Edition. Not the motherboard I would have chosen. It's a little bit gaudy for me with all the RGB, but it was certainly due. Um, I actually got this through the New Egg Shuffle, and I'm I'm kind of impressed with the motherboard. Uh, you know, personally, I would have chosen you know one of the Gigabyte Oris Elite motherboards, something like that. But I do like the aesthetics of this build. All black goes with my all black um, Corsair Obsidian 500D. And look at this back plate. Of course, it gets my greasy handprints on it, so I'm gonna have to clean that off before I put it in there. But the aesthetics is beautiful and it feels very rigid, very tough. Um, another thing I like is on most of the X570 boards, you see where that logo is? That's usually where their X570 fan would sit to cool the chipset and NVMe. And they moved it down because if you have a triple slot or a dual or 2.5 inch uh, slot GPU, that chipset will just be sucking in that hot air from the GPU. So they moved it down, which was a smart move. Uh, on this revision of the motherboard. On the rear I.O. we got uh, clear CMOS, BIOS, easy flash button, Wi-Fi uh, 6, I wanna say. Yeah, Wi-Fi 6. And then there's the USB port for the easy flash. We got a couple of USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2s, a Type-C, a 2.5 uh, gigabit Ethernet, only one compared to my original Z390 Tachi Ultimate. So that's a little bit disappointing, but it's okay. And then 7.5, uh, 7.1 surround sound. So pretty stout motherboard. And we're gonna be pairing that with the Ryzen 5900X and seeing how it goes. Uh, definitely can finally utilize the Corsair um, MP600, which is a Gen 4 NVMe when the previous motherboard was only Gen 3. So uh, as far as real world performance, maybe in like editing or CAD or, you know, some type of uh, work applications, but not so much in gaming. But let me go ahead and get this all installed and show you guys the final result. All right, here she is. If we look at the inside, the motherboard actually glows quite well. There's a bar, if we look at the back, behind the back plate, there was a bar that goes down the side of this motherboard. VRMs or the IO shield, RGB, the chipset. Looks really sick. So let's go ahead and power her on and see the completed build. Really loud with the Noctua fans, but pretty sick. Got an RGB strip in here as well to add some accent. And that is about as RGB as you can get minus these fans, but I'd rather have good airflow for this AIO rather than RGB. I think this is plenty enough. Honestly, I turned these LL series fans off when it's in my room and it's nighttime, but the MSI actually goes really well with this build. So we got the MSI RX 6800 in here, the Corsair MP600 Gen 4 NVMe, G-Skill Trident Z RGB. I know I need four sticks, uh, Gamers Nexus Proof with four uh, sister pairs of DDR4. We could get some extra performance with this Ryzen 5900X, so that is something I'm looking into. I did hit up Crucial to see if I could get their 4000 megahertz kit. Uh, we're just waiting to hear back. If not, I'll look into it and consider it. But plenty of room, plenty of capability. I still have some more NVMe drives down here. And that fan does not kick on 
until it gets really, really warm. That's actually part of the new updated BIOS. I guess the fan was running too much, and so the new BIOS has tamed that down. Average chipset temperature, though, that I've seen so far is around 62 to 64 in this hot Florida ambient air. So there she is. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.